All right, this is Jason with the Primal Outdoors channel. And I have been getting one to two comments a video asking me to do a review on my 1999 F-250, not quite so super, Super Duty. All right, so like I said, I've been getting a lot of requests to do a review on, on my pickup. And like I said, it is a 1999 Ford F-250 Super Duty. This particular truck's equipped with the 5.4 liter Triton V8. It's got the ZF5 five-speed manual transmission. And it is a champagne colored extended cab long bed. So it's an eight foot bed. Um, other than just a couple really minor things, there's not really any modifications to it. Uh, if you watched a few months back, I did a video where my buddy Todd from Central Oregon Survival Network uh, added uh, some worn hubs to the truck, which I've been very happy with. Uh, they have worked great, much better, I think, than the automatic hubs worked. I, I definitely can feel like the truck is solidly in four wheel drive when I lock these in. And uh, somebody before me put a K&N filter in the truck. And then the only other thing that I have done is replace the stock, stock stereo with a fairly inexpensive Walmart stereo that just gave me Bluetooth capability so I could connect my phone. Uh, but other than that, the, the, the suspension is stock, everything stock. It's had just regular maintenance, ball joints replaced, spark plugs replaced, things like that uh, throughout the years. I've had this truck since it had 110,000 miles on it. It currently has 183,000 miles on it, so it's definitely getting a bit long in the tooth. So the other question I get asked a lot about the truck is if I'm gonna do any more modifications to it. And quite honestly, I just don't know because it is pretty long in the tooth and I just don't know how much money I'm really willing to, to put into this, into the truck right now. Plus for the most part, for 90, I'd say 95% of the uh, off-road camping that I like to do, this truck has been fine just the way it is. It's got plenty of clearance. Um, I don't have very aggressive tires. I often get a uh, question about that too in my comments, you know, that I don't have uh, like very, really aggressive mud tires or anything like that for when I'm in snow or mud. And the reason is, is as much time as I spend off-road in this truck, I still spend way more time on pavement. And at over $1,000 for a set of tires, I don't wanna be replacing tires all the time. So I buy the most aggressive tire I can buy that still gives me a, qual a good quality warranty on the tire. <clears throat> now, uh, I do have some notes here, some other things that I wanna make sure that I don't forget to tell you guys. Uh, other things about the truck is it does have a very large gas tank. It's probably 31 or 32 gallons. I don't know exactly, but I can tell you when it's on E, I can put uh, 29 to 30 gallons in this truck. So it does cost quite a bit when I go to take it to the gas station. Um, with gas prices here in Oregon, where I'm at, uh, a trip to the gas station is around 75 to 80 bucks uh, for me. So, but that, uh, like, it gets about, I wanna say it gets about 16, 17 miles per gallon, so it doesn't do too bad. So I can, I can go quite a ways on, a, on one tank of gas, but it definitely is a hurt on the wallet when you go to the gas station. Now, as far as the engine is concerned, like I said, it has the 5.4 liter V8 Triton. This is an F-250. It's way too small of an engine, way too small of an engine for this truck, for this size truck. For just the way I have it outfitted right now, it does okay, but if you buy an F-250, you're probably buying it because you, you want the payload and the ability to tow something. And when you put uh, any type of you know, trailer on the back of this thing, you definitely feel, feel it back there. And uh, the engine just has a hard time have, uh, keeping up, basically. So I do have an RV. I do take it out some, uh, you know, once or twice a year. If I get to any steep hills, I will probably be in third gear at 3,500 RPM, and if I'm lucky, I'm going 30 miles an hour, okay? So, yeah, way underpowered, 5.4 liter V8, way underpowered. 
I do have a question if you want to leave. If, for those that know or have some experience, uh, leave it down in the comments. But if you have a 5.4 liter, uh, uh, one of the Fords with a 5.4 liter, whether it be the F-150 or any of the models that came with the 5.4 liter, I'd be curious to know, have you tried chipping, the tru chipping your truck and did it do any good? So if you have any experience in that, I definitely would like to see a comment down below. Or if you did any other modification that you felt gained you some horsepower torque, I definitely wouldn't mind knowing that as well down in the comments. But um, from what I've kind of read and seen, it seems pretty like up in the air, like, like there's not, you don't really gain a lot by chipping it. Uh, so I haven't done it, but I definitely, if, if, if you have some experience, I'd like to hear about it. Um, now the other, the quirk about this truck that I don't, I do not like is with the transmission. Now I love manual transmissions. I don't mind driving them at all. I've driven lots of different manual transmissions uh, and different vehicles. And this one is awful. Uh, it, it grinds a lot. You'll be you going from like second to third. It likes to grind a lot, especially uh, like in the morning when the truck's not warmed up. Uh, as it warms up, it seems to do better. But uh, yeah, going from uh, second to third, it seems to want to grind quite a bit. And reverse, it doesn't like to go in reverse. And it's been like this ever since I've gotten the truck back when it had 110,000 miles on it. It's always been like this. So it could just be this particular transmission. It could be something with the synchros with this transmission. I don't know, but it's awful. Um, and at some point I would like to take it in and uh, have the transmission rebuilt and hopefully it would be better. But at this point, it's just been a, I, I've just learned to live with it. I've, you know, I've, I've learned to live with that, that problem. But yeah, as far as manual transmissions goes, this one, this truck here has the worst I've ever driven. But on that note, this truck has been very reliable. Uh, in the time that I've owned it, I've only had minor issues that you would expect with a high mileage vehicle, a sensor go out here or there, uh, just re real basic things. Probably the most, the, the biggest thing that happened is I lost the front drive or the rear drive line, but because I keep tools in the truck, I was able to hop on under, remove the rear drive line, put the truck in four wheel drive, get it home, get the drive line fixed and replaced and and um, get it back on the road again. So that's probably the biggest thing that I had. Everything else has just been minor. I do try to keep up on service on this truck, uh, especially since it is high miles. I do try to get it in and get the oil change and all the fluids checked every three to 4,000 miles on it. And I get the can in filter that's uh, uh, provided in the truck. I get it cleaned every time as well. So. Do try to take care of it. It is dirty all the time. It's dirty inside all the time because I'm always out in the back country with it and doing stuff and I got two dogs running in and out of it. So it may not always look like it's well taken care of, but when it comes to the chassis and the, the chassis and the motor, I do try to do my best to make sure that everything is well taken care of on this truck. One of the questions I get asked all the time, or I get asked again about this truck is, why I got this truck for overlanding and or car camping. And the reality is I did not buy this truck for car camping or overlanding. I actually bought this truck many, many years ago and I was doing, you know, a completely different place in my life. I was married, me and my wife had horses and we bought this truck so that we could pull a two horse trailer around and get hay. We didn't, I did not buy this truck thinking, hey, I want that truck because it's gonna be an awesome, uh, overlanding truck. It just so happened that once I just started kind of moving my, um, moving into doing more car camping, this was just the truck I had. So this is the truck I used and I, fi I figured out how to make it work for me. So it's not a matter of that I thought this was the best truck that I could buy for myself to do this type of thing. It's a matter of it's what I had, so it's what I'm using. Um, so if I can make any suggestions to anybody that are out there with their vehicles and, you know, kind of looking at car camping, you know, Yes, it's, it would be nice to have a, a vehicle that was fully outfitted for overlanding and everything, but there's, you know, but start with what you have and, and go from there and then kind of figure things out. Now we'll help you make decisions later down the line to maybe what vehicle you would like to have. Having this truck and doing what I have done, you know, the only real downside that I find to this truck is its overall size. It's a little bit big for getting out in some of these roads. Therefore, why I have so much pinstriping down the sides and all and and everything. 
and trying to get turned around in certain places can be really a pain in the butt being the fact that this is an extended cab long bed you know so there is downsides to it but for the most part i do like the truck it's been it's worked out great and i've been able to do pretty much uh everything i want to be able to do and get to the places i want to get to using this truck so it's not the ideal overlanding truck but it definitely works it definitely works for me and gets me and, and does what i want now i'm not heavy into hardcore four-wheel driving or mudding or any of that stuff so the truck's just really not set up for that uh, that type of stuff now i do also get questions about what i plan to do next to the vehicle or what modifications i would like to do next now there's two things that i wouldn't mind doing if uh, i decide to move forward and do some more the first thing is I would like to have a dual battery set up with an isolator so that that way I could be charging my camera batteries and drone batteries and stuff like that without taxing the actual starter battery. Uh, right now I, I you know, use the starter battery for everything which is not ideal. Uh, the second uh, thing that would be a real nice thing to have for me is even though I'm not into heavy four wheel driving, there just are those situations where they come in, would uh, get you out of a pinch or come in handy. I'd like a set of lockers, at least on the rear. If I had front and rear, that'd be awesome. But lockers would be my thing. As far as bigger tires, lift suspension, all that, I wouldn't do that to this truck. And the reason why is because what I told you before, the V8 engine's already got this truck underpowered. So putting big tires on it and a lift is only gonna make things worse. And I just never really felt like for the most part of what I do that I need that amount of clearance uh, to do what I like to do. So, so for me and my style of camping, you know, I just don't see that as, as, as necessary modifications. Maybe upgraded suspension, leaving it at the same height, just to get maybe a little smoother ride, something like that. But again, that's minor compared to, you know, to me, the, the bigger challenge for me and what I like to do, which is photography and going out and video, my bigger challenge right now is just power in the truck. So having a deep cycle battery added to it with an isolator would actually be the probably most helpful thing that I could do to the truck right now. Um, so other than that, I think that pretty much covers uh, everything I have about this truck that I think was of any interest to anybody. So I hope for those of you especially that want to know about the truck that I, if I answered any questions that I had about it, if you have any more questions or specific questions that you would like to know, please leave those in the comment. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel and you like outdoor related content and photography, cause that's kind of what I do is go out and camp and do photography. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys again outside.